such as a male sex hormone. How far have we come? Number two, when this advanced species during ancient earth times mated with animals, animals of earth's origin, their coitus resulted in a new offspring, animal man. And the animal portion of their union followed the animal menses which are governed by the moon and at that time the earth took on a moon. They were then called hue men or animal men, lower vibratory creatures of the fallen heavens. Three, when this advanced species during ancient earth's times mated with animals on earth, their cortis resulted in another fallen energy unit. And that was even fallen lower than the original humans who at least needed the moon cycle to propagate. High alkaline diets, enzymes, fresh juices, oxygen, and chlorophyll containing foods along with deep breathing and exercise shortens the menses. Most female athletes, circus performers, long distance runners, tennis players, tend to slow their menses to no more than one and a half days. Most vegetative, animal eating, white sugar containing females have their menses extended to a five to seven day mince cycle. Many normal healthy females don't even start menstruating at 19 or 20 years old and then usually worried parents, ignorant doctors or money hungry doctors, bring their menstrual cycles on with intensive efforts and I won't be so low as to tell you some of the practices to induce menses, but maybe some of you males or females may have heard of them. And they can become extremely violent and volatile. All original zygotes are females when formed. They later change, and as our planet has lowered in its vibration, now that is at least 98% still true. After six to eight weeks, the male fetus starts to secrete testosterone, otherwise it would have remained a female. Now please, we're going to start getting rough. Listen intently and take it accordingly. There is no truth until you decide what truth is. Sometimes a small quantity of testosterone is secreted, just enough to make testes form on the developing embryo, but not enough to utilize proper brain chemistry and pituitary balance and indigenous homosexuality can be produced. I don't need to repeat that because you heard it, didn't you? How many want to hear just one more time? I thought that. Boy, I'm getting psychic. Sometimes a small quantity of testosterone is secreted just enough to make testes form on the developing embryo, but not enough to utilize proper brain chemistry and pituitary gland balance, and indigenous homosexuality can be produced. Birthmarks are the mental impregnations and decreased ability of women to still mark and control the vibratory rates of her cells. Dermoid cysts are the undeveloped cells starting the first trimester of fetal development and microscopic examination will verify this fact. The tear, teeth, and nails are there. In many cases this budding tendency can go on each side of the dermoid casing and may become even other type of cyst, especially when improper chemical balance is maintained due to drugs. The word conception means to conceive mentally. 
man descended from woman. And circumcision is the artificial means to finalize this separation. The male testes is a woman's descended ovum, now encased within the scrotum. You know what's coming next. The male penis is an elongated clitoris. The female fallopian tube, made by fallopian in 1523, is the male vas deferens glands, or urethra duct, which is really an amalgamation of the fallopian tubes. The male prostate, and this is one of the reasons why prostate trouble is on the increase, is an atrophied womb, and every man has the mammary glands of the female and can produce milk if he is normal. The bulbal urethra glands of the male are the equal of the larger so-called vestibular glands of woman. And interesting enough, the female thyroid gland with the three lobe allows enough iodine storage to keep that bulbal urethra gland functioning when man begins to dehydrate. What you've heard is different. What you heard may already be agreed on by some, heard of by many, and now is being considered by you in the audience. I state this is just the start of what has been the fall of man on earth and the propagation of a new kind of species. All in all, and since we have a man lecture to follow and a children lecture to follow it, I give you the reasons again for the difference possibility in sex but the idea that it is possible to reproduce on earth without the union of sperm and egg. Now, again, before I turn this portion only, and please don't ask me about man and children, we have whole two new lectures coming up about them, I want to give you some research papers and items for those of you who want to either correlate that or to do it on your own. One is called the redundant male. It's a book by Dr. Jeremy Scherfass, C-H-E-R-F-A-S, and Dr. John Gribben, G-R-I-B-B-I-N. Two books by Professor Hilton Hotema, H-O-T-E-M-A. One, The Physiological Enigma of Woman, The other, The Great Red Dragon, both by Professor Hilton Hotema, H-O-T-E-M-A. The Sky People, by Professor, no, non-professor, Brinsley Lapoer Trench, B-R-I-N-S-L-E-Y, L-E-P-O-E-R, and then trench like a digging trench or trench coat. The Star People, Brad and Francis Steiger. The Star People, Brad and Francis Steiger. And Man the Unknown by Alexis Carroll. Man the Unknown by Alexis Carroll. It's open for questions, statements, and comments on woman only. What a wonderful subject. Oh, let me ask this again. Are they, can they come to the mic again? Uh, so this can be recorded. If you would pose a question, could you please approach the mic so it go on tape and won't be uh, inaudible. If you don't wish that, then you may hold it for later on. Pardon me? Repeat the question that will stop it from coming up. Sometimes I won't be able to hear the question. That'll be the problem there. If you want to double it on again, then fine. Okay, I'd rather approach the mic if you don't mind. And if you have questions, therefore, on just the woman lecture, you might want to kind of just form a little line there. And if you don't, then we can move on to the man lecture. We do. Careful again. You can, you, you can walk over there. Sorry. Walk in front of his camera. He doesn't mind. Okay.
Yes. All you have to let the ladies sit down and then we'll talk. I totally agree with that. And since only women were being produced on earth and there was no race of man, for man to make his impact upon earth, things had to be changed. And when the first birth that came about, the union of a fallen type of an animal, and this female man made his interest on earth. Way out, but that's the way I understand it. Uh, questions or comments, if there are any? <laughs> okay, I think he heard it. He wants to make sure that somebody like me say something like that. Yes, I did. My understanding agrees with what the young lady stated, that the first propagations and reproduction were all females. Only thing being born on earth were females, through the female womb. And then a mating was done with an animal, and man was produced. Okay? Uh, yes. Fair question. I really hate to propagate the answer because then we'd be taken off in spaceships for a journey that would keep us here at one o'clock in the morning. Let me say, and let's see where this Leo is going to lead, that they were called in many cases, and I think the less term used was Anunnaki, and that they were people from off the planet who used ingraftation, gene splicing, and genetic manipulation and have continued to do so for some time. I haven't avoided a thing. A bipedal animal resembling now what we would call our basic primate ape. Oh, that's a good question. I have no idea. Well, that's not true. I have ideas. Verification becomes different. Some say at least the last done was about 150,000 years ago. Some say this started at least close to three and a half million years ago with this particular species of people. And that there was intelligent life even before then. Thank you. Welcome. One more question. Uh, you say uh, man sent it from one. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have a problem with that. <laughs> now, I would want to say that uh, since you made that statement, can you explain to me, um, which I always heard, and nobody has given me an answer to it, explain the Adam and Eve theory. Oh. Okay. Let me state that many things that you will hear me say are in contraire to biblical theology. Let me state that what I am stating is nothing that I dreamed up and does not have to be true. There is no truth until you decide what truth is. My truth through research has been to take on the theory again of parthenogenesis and that the Bible has been changed so many times and so many books removed from it and so many consoles to duplicate and duplicit that that men wanted in order to control other people and other peoples. So I can only state that could get into a conjecture that would bring every minister in Philadelphia in here and it could go on for years, gaining nothing. The end result will be the research knowledge and hopefully wisdom that you believe what you want. There's no truth. Until you decide what truth is, I let that rest. I go no further. Yes, questions or comments? Good evening. Could you get a little bit closer to the mic? That's kind of.
tall for you. Just, just kind of pull that mic down. There you, there you go. Thank you very much. It's a fair question. Uh, I don't thank you, and I don't know that I have an answer for that. There are many Bibles. Uh, if you go into some research sections of some major universities, they will, because they have coveted them highly, have research articles that you cannot take out and publications that you cannot take out, which will show you many of the other Bibles. Uh, without too much trouble, you could probably contact a group called Health Research and they have a lot of the missing books or excerpts from it which they copyright to say these are authentic and extant and that these books when there would be able to support the theory that there have been many consoles and many changes within it. It's not that hard even to find that in not only theosophical but in theological seminaries the point is it's always been an issue as to how much to release and therefore it's a thing that is discussed on what they call white papers or communications within an organ or a church or a school and doesn't usually get released to the public. It's not that hard to find and I do give a lecture called The True Story of Christianity. That would be one I would not get into tonight. We've got enough problems, I'm sorry, enough interesting subjects to cover as it is. If you want to invite me back and pay me that kind of money, yes, we could get into it. Other than that, uh, I can possibly mail you, if you call us at the Meta Center, some of the books to research. You have to get them as best you can. But there are many publications. Yes? You're back here, so I'm glad you got those brains together, and you're being very integral, so <laughs> let's hear you. My question is, Tom, the job that I didn't hear that part there. The job that the gentleman before me spoke, Tom had a question after the other one had the wrong number, which I'll ask in a second. But his question relative to what they did with the animal, was there some reason why the female species made a decision or a certain of this, this female speech made a decision not to continue uh, reproducing the normal way that they had been using that somebody chose to bathe with the animals at the spot? They were mind controlled and as they had been subject to even greater intelligences in the first place once Earth fell from its magnetic field into what is called an electromagnetic field they had no difference. The God made them do it. I'm saying again, in many cases, when the reference is to God or Lord God, it does not mean original prime creator. And that there have been many such intelligences that have interfaced and subjugated, mind controlled, genetically mutated, manipulated species on Earth for a very long time. I didn't understand. Experiments, yes. The first question I was thinking of before he asked this, uh, this special G spot that they refer to, it doesn't blame the G, G spot man, it doesn't really exist, if so is there any option? Okay, now, no, no, don't, don't, don't leave yet. Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, no. Uh, no, careful. No, I didn't. No, no, no. Please come back to the mic and say. I, it's distorted here. I, did you say, what did you say? Would you repeat it again? Oh, just. The G spot. That's what I thought you said. Does okay. it really exist as far as you can research? And if it does exist, what function does it have? Okay, that's not my area of research. However, I have heard of other research props on radio and I've read partially into a book about the G spot in females that is very sensitive. Uh, it is usually uh, back of the clitoris, and one of the connections is because of that which is highly uh, sensitive and sexual and stimulatory. Uh, having researched it, no. Having spent more time than that, no. Okay. Yeah. All right.
talk, uh, you might want to raise the mic just a little bit. Yeah, there you go, thank you. Ah, talk to the mic. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know it's, I tell you, let's we're gonna turn the whole thing around so you can face me and make eye contact too. I can't hear you too well unless you talk directly into the mic and so. Okay, I was somewhat distracted. The, 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 the young people in the back would make a lot of noise. Um, okay. 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 Oh, okay, I'm sorry, yes, sir. Good. I would totally agree, and in fact, uh, any somewhat educated, not even necessary schooled research will show that there are all kind of genetic uh, reproductions on Earth. Uh, they state that they have not cloned. They cloned at the University of Chicago all the way back in the 50s. 58 to be exact, 57, put five such uh, on an island and observed them for 20 years. Uh, they have cloned and replicated just about everything you can think of, including a dinosaur. And dinosaurs do exist. We can get into that too. That's a lecture called Gene Illogicals. Uh, they're just numbers of publications and show uh, that can show that they have crossbred everything. They need, now have plants that have insect venom, and they have insects with plant chlorophyll. I mean, when you're when you do not hold to a spiritual role or feel that you are a co-creator or even God themselves because you feel that the creator does not exist, then you do whatever comes in your mind to do. And on this planet, there's a lot of mind. Yes. Good evening, sir. You, I know you want to bring that mic up. <coughs> Otherwise, you're going to get a crook in your back. Uh, you see that little little round thing halfway down there, little knob? Metal. Okay, fine. What is the definition of a heartbeat? Of a heartbeat? A, a higher being. My definition of a higher being. Okay, trying to cut through the quick and not and not. Uh, equip. I would say, uh, like an angel, for some would be to me somebody who has intelligence that, for some reason or another, is not understood by one who sees it. Uh, and consequently, I would say like a God or a Lord God would be uh, somebody with a very high IQ past the norm and so on like that. I definitely believe in a creator. I definitely believe in a first cause. I think we have changed the name to fit some things that we have not quite understood and has been taught that same kind of, um, whether it's fallacious or not, that same kind of concept. Did, did, did you understand what I said? I thought because you were walking back there. A higher being to me is, there's only to me in my mind one creator. That is the only higher being that I hold allegiance to. I can envy, I can respect, I can try to emulate, I can study other beings who are more intelligent than myself and then try to see if I can find wisdom in some of their actions. I do not feel that some of the references that we make are to necessarily higher beings, but just people who have had a chance to be, become a little bit more intelligent than we are. I still believe in a universal cosmic prime creator, but not in some of the multiplicities of gods and Lord gods that proliferate our religions. Okay, I'm glad that those, uh oh, there's, uh oh. 
Okay, now I got to do a man and a woman lecture, and I'd like to finish it before 10 o'clock. Hello, my brother again. Yes, okay. I apologize for being late. Um, that's some things I had to take care of. Um, but the, what I want to ask you, and the belief that I'm following is um, our Islam and the teachings that I'm going, that I'm receiving is that um, he is the creator of the first and last, and um, there's none other than him. And what I want to ask you was, during the time of these other beings that were going to gene splicing and manipulating, um, was this during the time of before the creation of Adam or after? If we go on the biblical statement from the biblical statement itself, or the Masoretic text, the people who wrote the scribes of the Bible, they state that Adam was about 4040 BC. I would state that 4040 BC with the Garden of Eden, that there had been intelligent life on earth for at least five, well let's just say three and a half billion years. And intelligent life proved for at least 200,000 years. So it's just a matter. If we take that that has been interpreted by the ministers who study the Bible to be Adam and Eve in a garden 4040 BC, then I think that answer pretty much is my statement of that. But um, as um, referring to uh, the Qurans, also is in your opinion, has that been tampered with too? Is that a what? The Quran, in your opinion, has that been tampered with too? Let's just say that whether I begin to get into all religious works that have been tampered with, anytime you put a publisher and an editor into a book and then mass produces, and you have nobody controlling them, anything is possible with any book, and they're presently changing the Bible again to update it to New Age consciousness. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, the glands, if I missed anything, like I said, you were talking about the glands for the man. You missed a lot. Okay. But we're still going to talk about man and children yet. But I have, okay, so you just touched on a woman? No, I didn't touch a woman. I didn't even touch on a woman, but we sure talked about woman a lot, including womb man. Okay, thank you for your correction. You're welcome. Um, I have a, a problem with sleep apnea. And is there any gland or anything in my body that I can do other than surgery at a hospital to uh, help to alleviate this uh, problem that I have? I don't know. That would require a consultation. I don't even know in a consultation if I have enough intelligence to answer it, but we can talk about it, but not here. Okay? Thank you. Okay, peace to you too, sister. We will cover that again in our children lecture, but since it is asked now, and some of you may be leaving before that, uh, a birthmark in, in one understanding is that the female has the ability, or had the ability, it's now somewhat latent, to control cells under her mind or under mind control and that certain markings at certain areas of the body show what brain was active left or right brain and also the area would show the area of influence for instance in many cases you will have boys with birthmarks on their right side above the waist and then you have maybe on a few uh, below the waist but on the left side Whereas you'll find more girl markings in the center of the back or on the left side, and then in some cases uh, below on the right side. In many cases, it's what the woman was frightened by, thought of, or in any way brought into picture. This is why I picture women would see mice, and in many cases, especially uh, before there was more stressful things other than seeing a mouse, and so you'd see a birthmark showing resemblance of a face or a head or tail of a mouse. A woman would crave strawberries because of the a serious nature that was lacking in her system at that time, and a strawberry patch would be there. 
uh, many times uh, whatever she would see or think about became almost an imprint on that cell. As woman has gotten away from the mind control of that, the birthmarks have become more and more scattered. What is very interesting, there are some self-same birthmarks on different races and different genders within that race that have never even seen each other, but the patches are the same. That leads to something else entirely, which I refuse to get into at this discussion tonight. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. My question deals with the Bible and Holy Quran. In the Bible it says, let us make men. And in the Quran it says, let us speak. It says, we reveal this to so and so. And we. Could you give us your ideas on who the us of the Bible and who is the we of the Quran? Not at this time. Because the subject is woman. And we've kind of deviated from that norm, and now we're getting into biblical discussion and Quranic discussion, El Quran discussion, which I didn't want to get into. Let me say this, though. Since I didn't stop anyone else from asking the questions, let this be the last one until I come back at another time with biblical or so-called discussions there. Since it would not be fair, I should have said that, not be fair to not answer your questions since I went into the others, let me kind of deal with it. Please stay there until I finish to see if you want to say more. Um, I think that the we, the plurality, shows other beings of higher nature or possibly mentality that were talking about what they wanted to do. But the point is, who then wrote about these beings and how do we know successfully that that interpretation was correct? I would say if it is ad hoc, anything is possible. If it is strict and direct, then obviously about more than one person discussing what they will or will not do and so be it. Okay, please, if you will, not that I would not love to do so, but because it was advertised as man, woman, and children, and I want to present that to you, let us not get into biblical discussions. I made my statement. You understand my statement. You have your feelings, and I do not at all take away from any of those feelings, but it's just a matter of time. Uh, given another time, we could get into a lot of discussions about 16 crucified saviors, about many of the other books and many other missing books, but not at this time, please. Okay? Okay, is that all of the general discussions about the um, woman lecture for now? Good. If we may, then I'd like to prepare to get into my second subject tonight, which has been promised, and I want to try and fulfill, whether you agree with me or not, and that's beautiful, is the man lecture. Of course, it would be very, at this time, boring, if not more, to have just nothing but women running around on the planet. I think some women might choose to exit if that was the case. I know a lot of men would. So I'd like to now get into a little discussion, if we will, on man. And it's interesting, as I said before, when I give the man lecture, I always expect women. When I give the woman lecture, sometimes I expect men. But when I give the man, woman, and children lecture, we're going to have a fun, interesting time, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. Say that with some exhilaration and some happiness in your voice. We're going to have a fun time, right? Yeah. <laughs> Man. It's interesting, too, that at this time in our race for space, at this time in our 1995 calendar year that we have the O.J. Simpson trial dangling like a uh, red dragon and a big sword of Damocles over our heads as we're looking at that and missing so many other much more important events that are happening in our country at a fast, almost frightening pace. But this is the way we do it. First with sex and with race and with, of course, the whole idea of one, ra uh, one sex subjugating another. There is a day called May Day celebrated throughout Europe and celebrated a little bit in the United States. It was canceled in a celebration a lot because it was stated that it was only practiced by communist nations and country and the whole idea of May Day became one that was political rather than its original meaning. Its so original meaning was taken from what is called May 1st or Happy Day, Happy May Day, sometimes referred to as the rites of spring, the fertile season. 
It was a commemoration of the beginning of summer, the turning of spring, and was celebrated by the good ship Mayflower, or the flower that grew, the Maypole, and the May Queen. I begin this talk of man to only let you understand that it is an old custom celebrated on every continent of the beginning of man or the sequestering of man by womb man. We'll make this clear as I move on again. Away from the religious and the puritanical and even the political thought who have used this concept to abuse it, I want to get into what the dictionary has stated about the phylum species called man. It says that man is an adult male human being. We're starting off in agreement, right? Hopefully so. I don't see any hands yet now. All right. Okay. That boy is a male child before he becomes a man. And at one time that the word girl meant young boy. Now that's just about what we heard about, or at least what I studied about and shared with you, was the same thing about girl and young